What's up guys, it's Jamie Grace and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be doing an unfiltered and unedited Q&A all about songwriting. I don't know why I'm like doing like this, like I'm like, like canceling something, I don't know. Anyways, I'm going to be doing a Q&A all about songwriting, everything that you guys have ever wanted to know from a human that writes songs for a living. Um, so yeah, I, I sing and play guitar, I write songs for a living and all that stuff. And in case you just stumbled across this video, you don't know who I am, so I have a couple of Grammy nominations and number one um, singles and awards um, from like the like Dove Awards and Kayla Fan Awards um, and New Release Today Awards, a couple of Billboard nominations and um, really cool moments as a songwriter. To me, while that stuff is really fascinating and like so humbling to say, um, the greatest success as a songwriter is when humans hear your music and they connect with it. Um, regardless of how many humans that is. Um, I almost said how many humans that are. Um, so yeah, that's the most, that's the greatest form of success for me personally as a writer. Um, but the awards and stuff are really cool too. And so I'm just, I'm glad that this gets to be my job. Um, I've had some songs placed in shows like Baseball Wives, um, commercials with like Dell computers and uh, Belk. Uh, and my songs are played in like Walgreens and... Uh, JC Penny and so it's really cool. I like I like getting to make music for a living. Um, also Southern Girl Claim. You can also hear my music in Waffle House. So <laughs> I did a uh, like an open think of a bob on Instagram. I'm like yo send me some questions. Let me know. Oops wrong way. Let me know what you wait. Let me know what you want to know. There we go. <laughs> and I'm gonna try to answer as many of these questions as I possibly can. The first question on my songwriting Q&A is, do you plan to have more kids in the future? The second question is, where do you get your creative juices from? All over the place, but I think the greatest thing that I can learn as a songwriter, because for me, writing songs is about like, ooh, I want to say something. So the greatest strength that I found as a writer, um, I was making sure the ring light wasn't showing up in my glasses too much, is, um, is listening. It's hard to listen. It really is sometimes hard to listen. And I don't just mean listening in a conversation, but I mean not listening to music, like turning everything off in the car and just listening to everything, listening to the rhythm of the tires on, you know, a gravel road, listening to the the, the sounds when you roll the window down just for a brief moment. Um, maybe because somebody tooted in the car, I don't know. Just listening to not being like a creeper, but listening to conversations that are loud enough for you to hear in an appropriate way without being a creeper. Um, yeah, just listening is really important to me as a songwriter because when there's so much that, like, I don't know, when we're, I guess listening to the unexpected would be a better way to say it because when we're listening to the expected, like, ooh, I'm gonna play this podcast, ooh, I'm gonna play this song, ooh, I'm gonna watch this TV show. When we're filling our minds with so much stuff, my mom used to say when we were little, I don't want you watching too much television because it's someone else telling you their vision. Um, she never said TV's bad, TV's the worst, these people are terrible. She just said, that's someone else's vision. So turn off that other noise and like find the unexpected noise. Find the quiet which brings in the unexpected noise which can change your life. So yeah, that's 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 where I find most of my creative juices. Uh, what is your my favorite song that I've written? I mean that changes every day. Right now I'm releasing new music every single month on Spotify and Amazon and Apple Music and YouTube and everywhere else you can find music digitally. So um, it kind of just changes with the month. Um, I just finished writing a song called, well, I don't know what it's going to be called yet. It'll either be called Fighters or We Are Fighters. And it's weird because I have a song called Fighter that came out a couple of years ago, but I think this one might be my, my favorite, like top three of songs I've ever written. But Dream Big and Show Love, those are two songs that just came out this year that I wrote and I'm really proud of both of those. So maybe Dream Big is my favorite. That was the longest roundabout answer. Um, was it hard to think of a beat for the instrument? Um, I mean, that's again just one of those silence things because if you're just constantly listening to a bunch of other music, which I love to do, you get so consumed with the way that beat sounds, the way that piano part sounds, the way this guitar sounds, that you like honestly just kind of can zone out. Like I just zoned out. That was not for like an illustration. I was turning off my little air purifier thing because I was tired of the sound. Um, hashtag Randall comment if you got that random reference. But um, yeah, I just, 
I have to just kind of really focus on the instrument. I just have to play a lot of music. Like, if I don't know what to play on the piano, then I sit there for three hours and just play around on the piano. If it's driving me crazy, then I don't. But if I'm sitting there enjoying it and like learning new things, I just keep going. And then if I just keep trying and trying, I'll just learn something new. Um, what is the best way to get focused on writing a song? You know, I'd say just find your, I feel like all these answers are essentially the same. That's because I was going to just say find your quiet place. But yeah, just if you're having a hard time, you know, you're getting distracted or something like that. You know, let the people that you love the most, you know, let them know like, hey, I'm going to go take 30 minutes and really try to write this song or something like that so that you can put your phone on airplane mode and that you can, so you can put some noise canceling headphones on and just zone in, you know, um, and just set that goal of like, hey, I'm going to spend this 30 minutes working on this. And if that seems too stressful, say I'm going to give myself five minutes, 10 minutes, and I'm really gonna focus on the task at hand and really focus on developing the song to what I want it to be. How often should you rhyme and do you find it difficult? Um, I do rhyme, I think more often than not in my music because I think it's cool, but um, I also have a lot of vaulted Jamie Gray songs, so just like kind of hidden away songs that don't rhyme at all, that have very little structure, that are just super weird, that aren't as long as people would expect them to be or they don't have, you know, the verse, chorus, verse, chorus. Because I think that as important as it is to learn structure, it's just as important to create music that is just fun for your heart, whether you share it or not. Um, I actually have a songwriting course that um, just got released today, fun fact. I filmed some of it in this outfit. Um, and I talk about that a lot. I talk, there's a, a whole like um, section of the course called to structure or not to structure. And it just goes through like, how often do I need to rhyme? How often do I need to make things make sense according to what the, the world standard of what is music? So, um, so yeah, that's a really good question. It would take a really long time for me to dig into that because I, I want to talk about that more. It's just one of my favorite topics, but I hope that that did help. Just like, have fun. Um, Let's see, what, oh, I was about to read the same two questions. How do you get inspiration? I feel like I kind of already, that was like the first or second one. Um, how did you figure out what style of music was best for you? I mean, some of that's just gonna be based on what you feel, but at the same time, a lot of that's also gonna be, or some of that could also be based on just having wise people in your life kind of giving you like encouragement and support you know, based on that, because you could be thinking like, oh, I, I want to be a soul singer. Like I want to do soul because I love listening to soul music. And then when you sing, I'm not saying that if your voice isn't naturally a soulful voice, then you can't sing soul, but you could have a voice where people hear it and they're like, but you would sound incredible singing this country song or this pop song or this, you know, have you tried rapping? You know what I mean? Like sometimes other people can bring out um, some of the best things in us, you know? Um, I, I, You guys know me. I love a good competition show. I watch America's Got Talent. I watch The Voice. I watch, I like watching all, actually, I'm very behind on The Voice because we have a little one now. We kind of had to like choose certain shows based on what day she's at my parents and stuff. Um, the Masked Singer is one of my favorite shows. American Idol, I watch it. And a lot of people didn't like Simon Cowell on American Idol, like the earlier seasons, because they would say that he's too harsh. I didn't always agree with Simon Cowell, um, but there were so many times where I was like, bro, that was good advice though. <laughs> like, you need to take that advice and you need to run with that because that was wisdom. Maybe he didn't say it in the most polite way, but maybe he's not trying to be your friend. He's trying to help your career. And so, um, yeah, it's just like, it's, it, it, it can be hard to find your style because sometimes it could feel like, oh, my voice, how do I match it with what I want? You know what I mean? So I do understand that that could be tough, but you just gotta keep trying a bunch of different styles even if you're not ready to write a full song just yet, get together with some co-writers and rearrange some covers that you really enjoy and just explore different styles and explore what you like. And then don't be afraid to take constructive criticism from those people in your life that do love and care about you and also have wisdom as well. Um, and then it's okay to enjoy music that you don't create, you know, um, there are styles of music like that. I mean, I, I grew up loving heavy metal um, and I love it to this day. And I, I, I'm a drummer before I'm a guitar player and I was in a thrash metal band with my sister. Um, and I don't think I'll ever make an album that sounds like Showbread or Atreyu or, 
you know, 12 Stones, and I don't even really know what exact genres those bands would be considered. I don't think I'll ever make a heavier rock album like Paramore. Well, actually, I probably will do that in my 40s. Um, but that's not my first and foremost style, but it doesn't mean that I can't love Paramore or Showbread. You know, it doesn't mean that I don't sing Mouth Like a Magazine all the time, just because. Um, let's see. Uh, do, 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 do. Um, lyrics or music first? Both. It really does just depend. And I think it's good to, if you have one that you typically lean toward, I think it's good to try the other one a couple of times too. My, my, um, ISO is so high. Like the background of this is just like, Bleh. um, so yeah, I think it's good to try more than one, um, or both of those things. You know, I like to write down every lyric I think of. I have some notes in my phone that are literally just one line of a lyric. It'll be like, I saw a turtle today. Like, why not write that down? Because what if you're writing a song one day and you're like, oh, if I had like an animal inspired line and you're like, oh my gosh, let me look in my notes. I saw a turtle today. So it just depends. I just, I record every note I sing and I write every lyric I think of. And I turn them into songs later. Um, where can you start if you want to write gospel music? I would say to just start, just start writing it. But I think if you mean for a profession, I would say to start writing it and then to start co-writing with people in your local church um, and seeing about playing those songs in your church maybe someday, you know, and that might take a couple of months to a year to kind of really develop those songs and really feel comfortable with them. Maybe even more than a year. I don't want anybody to be like, well, Jamie Grace said I could sing my originals within six to 12 months, you know. Um, but yeah, I think, I think oftentimes as songwriters, we think, oh, let me think of how I can get a bunch of people to listen to this. When it's like, we all live in communities with people. So if we all focused on these lo our local communities, it doesn't mean it's not gonna grow from there. But like, that's where I started, was in my local community, and it was super cool. Um, Let's see, do, do, do. how do you not get discouraged about the songs you've written but no longer relate to? That's a really good question. I don't think anyone's ever asked me that as far as songwriting goes. I would say that it happens. You know, I've written songs. I wrote a song called, <laughs> this, you might enjoy this. I wrote a song called 19 when I was 19. Uh, it got shot down. <laughs> Nobody liked it. So then when I was 23, I rewrote it because 19 and 23 kind of rhymed. And so I just changed it. To, it was like, 19 is everything and so much more. It's when you finally found out what you're looking for. Nobody liked it, but my mom. And so then when I was 23, I rewrote it to 23 is everything and so much more. Um, nobody liked it but my mom and so <laughs> then I was like okay 24 25 26 27 28 29 30 30 so maybe I'll release it when I'm 30 or maybe I'll release it when I'm 23 I don't know I I think if you no longer relate to a song and you just feel like it's an absolute no no it's never going to be released I say play it for a few people first before you just throw it in the trash um, I don't think, I don't believe in throwing songs in the trash. I should say that first of all. I believe in vaulting songs until they can be repurposed. I don't believe there's ever such a thing as a bad song. I believe that all lines and all songs are great, just maybe not together. So you just vault it and then you take the pieces from it that you might need later. Have you guys ever seen the show Chopped? Where they have a box of ingredients and it's just like the weirdest ingredients. That box of ingredients is not trash. They were just put in the box until it was time to repurpose them. So that's how I feel about songs. So if you no longer relate to these songs, I say that you play them for a couple of people, get their thoughts and opinions. They might be like, ooh, I like that line, I like that melody, or maybe they don't, don't, get, don't be offended if they don't. And then you just vault them and you just keep working on new songs, but you don't forget about the ones that you vaulted. You don't forget about the ones that you've locked away. You just keep them there until one day maybe you have to open up the vault um, and use parts of those songs for other things. And maybe for me, I change the words to 23 and I write it about someone else. Or maybe it's written about, wait, didn't Manny Moore just release a song about being 16 or 19 or something like that? You know, even if you don't feel like you relate to a song anymore, it doesn't mean that you didn't relate to it at a time and at a point. And it doesn't mean that it's not worth sharing. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. How do you find someone to record your songs? 
Well, you could start by literally Googling, if you live in Dallas, Texas, Googling Recording Studio Dallas, Texas, or just start by asking local mus asking other musicians that you know, hey, do you know a producer? Hey, do you know of anyone that makes music and stuff like that? It can be a little bit costly to record, so maybe if that seems like it's going to be too, you know, too expensive or something that just seems overwhelming when you don't want to invest that kind of money if you're not sure where you're going to take this, then I would start by talking to people at your school, talking to people at your church, talking to people at your job and being like, hey, do you ever want to try this? Because a lot of times you'll, and I actually have two friends that are going through this right now. I have a friend who's a singer who um, sings with a group and she wants to try to do stuff by herself just for fun. And then I have a friend who is a musician that plays in a band and he wants to start producing music, but he doesn't really know like if that's something that he's, you know, like a strong suit of his. He doesn't know if he wants to do it as a job or just for fun. So they actually came together and they were like, look, we're both learning. We're both exploring. Let's learn and explore this. You know, he's going to kind of learn and explore as a producer and she's going to learn and explore as a singer songwriter instead of being them both being in their groups. Well, they're still going to be in their groups. Um, so yeah, so I think that's a great thing too. It's like talk to your friends, build community and make friends. If you're like, oh, I don't have any friends who are musicians. Well, then find all the open mics, all the talent shows in your local community or start an open open mic, start a talent show, and make friends that way. Um, and I think that's a great way to find people to record your music. Um, also, I, I, I'm going to start opening that door a little bit more. It's, it's not going to be a lot because I still, you know, make music and travel for all the times, but I'm going to be opening that door a little bit more uh, in 2020 and 2021 to uh, record music and produce for people. So I'm excited about that. I produced for a band a couple of years ago um, and I took them out on tour with me and it, it was it was great. We had sold out shows and people loved their music. Um, and I produced my sister's music and so, um, and our music together. And so, um, yeah, it's fun. It's something that I've always enjoyed and I'm like, why not help other young artists find their voice? So look in the description if you wanna know more about that. Um, let's see. A lot of these questions are kind of the same, like, what was your favorite song to write? Um, do songs always have to be from inspirations? No, you can just make up a story and write about that. Um, advice to someone who can write the lyrics but can't really play music. Um, it never hurts to try to learn, but then the second thing I would say is go back to what I was just talking about, about finding a producer, and then do the same thing for a drummer, guitar player, all that stuff. I'm also going to leave a link in a bio about this really cool resource I know to find musicians, but that wouldn't necessarily be for co-writing. If you're talking about co-writing, local community, church, school, friends, neighborhood, start an open mic, go to an open mic, all those things. Um, how'd you become an established songwriter? What's your, what was your process? I mean, I started off on YouTube, like this is where I started, just sharing my songs on here. Some of them were great, some of them were not. Some of them have been vaulted, um, many of them have been. Um, and a lot of people think that it just kind of like happened overnight, like there was an artist that found me on YouTube and then just was like, here world, here she is. And um, that's not how it happened. Two years before that, I, I got a job on a television show um, called I Shine with TBN and um, I was doing my own original music through their tour. And so as a songwriter, I mean, and I'll, I'll leave some more links below, you have to remember that writing the song is going to be like 40% of the job. 60% is going to be the boring part, learning about copyrights and reading a bunch of boring information or seemingly boring information. But once you read it and learn it and understand it, you'll be like, thank you. I now understand <laughs> what I'm doing with my music and the legal process of where my music is going and who it belongs to. So you need to learn that part. Sorry is what it is. You can't hire somebody to do it. Well, you can't hire someone to do it for you, but you need to learn it for yourself. I had to, we all got to do it. Um, what was the question? Oh yeah, 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 my process. So, I mean, I just started by sharing my music. I played at every open mic that I could possibly play at. And I played some songs at open mics that did not work. And I played some songs at open mics that did work. I wrote a lot of parodies. I wrote a parody about everything for everything. I ran for SGA in my school. I ran for like every student government possible. Uh, opportunity that was possible in my school. I ran for it and I wrote a song for it. Um, every presentation in college, I wrote a song for it or I did a song for it. Every opportunity that I had to make music, I made music. I worked my hiney off. And that was before I was getting paid to do it. That was just like, let me just work really hard. And then me and my sister, we would go downtown and we would play those songs, you know, like 
like on sidewalks with our guitar cases open like hey give us money people you know like that I, I everywhere that I could I played music I would write music all day I would write music you know a lot of people might say like oh I have a full-time job like I don't have time to you know learn how to be a songwriter yeah you do is it a 20 minute drive to work that's 20 minutes of writing with a pen and paper probably not because I believe that, that would be very dangerous but your phone or recorder in the passenger seat yeah bruh la 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 right all the time share wherever you can um and you know just and collaborate with people all the times you know you've got like somebody in your church like yeah i think i'm gonna record an album do you need help writing it can i email you a song I work i'm working on and if they say no then they say no you're like okay bye i'll try somebody else um let's see how can I write a song with lots of emotion without completely breaking down? That's a good question because you don't want to like send yourself into like a meltdown while you're trying to get a story out. I mean, I would say just to do it in small pieces, you know, if it's causing you too much, like if it's like, you know, you're, you're starting to feel like anxiousness and even like panic coming on, like, you know, doing like five minute increments a day or something like that. But if you're talking about like your song is making you cry and like, have some emotional times while you're writing it keep writing it you know i don't know the extent of your emotions so i can't really be give you a, an incredibly educated answer on that but music needs emotions one of the most beautiful moments in music uh this year i think it was this year my gauge of time is not great but it was demi lovato at the grammy awards when she started singing her song, Anyone, is it? And she had to start it over. That's vulnerability. People want that in music and people need that in music because we all have those moments in life. Um, do you apply all of your lyrics to your life or just think of them? Oh, I've written so many songs to like some random person I saw in a car at a red light and I made a whole story up about their life. Yeah, so um there's that oh here we go what are you trying to say from your song 16 like that one i meet a lot of 16 year olds like at my job like um you know i'm in the signing line and i'll have somebody come up to me like hey i just turned 16 and i'm having a hard time dealing with my mom do you have any advice i hear so many stories and there's a particular young friend of mine um and she had just turned 16 when I wrote the song and I, I started writing it for her, but then I just kept writing it from all the stories I've heard and some of the stuff that I went through, but mostly it's just from stuff that 16 year olds go through. I find when I try to write happier, upbeat songs that they are very shallow. How do you avoid this? I mean, I would say that if you're having a hard time like pulling certain things in, then you might need a writing partner. It's okay to collaborate with someone. My sister and I know that like one of my strengths is writing chorus melodies and tags. Like I wrote, I love the way you hold me by my side, you'll always be. And I also wrote the, whoa, oh, 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 I love the way you hold me. And that, the, that kind of stuff just comes naturally to me. Like melodies and whoa. All that it just comes naturally it's just who I am um, what comes naturally to my sister is bringing in lyrics that will just capture you like at your core if you haven't heard of Morgan Harper Nichols she's the famous poet on the Instagrams she's also my big sister my claim to fame and she's my writing partner and um, we have released a song what's the one we were up uh, uh, hold your hand is the song that she and I just released together under our band name Harper still and she wrote the lyrics uh, can you taste them can you taste the mountain air feel the breeze through your hair you feel the rush like I would never think to write about a mountain and the air from the mountain captivating that's just who she is so I know that that's not my strength and she knows that her strength is not upbeat doo -doo 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 chorus me melodies. So we just come together and we learn from there. Um, but then also practice too. You know, it's just you have to practice. It's like, I, I think a lot of times when you're writing song, ask yourself 18,000 questions and answer those questions out loud. Don't do it in your head. Songwriting is not for normal people. Songwriting is for people that are willing to do the weird stuff. To be like, why is this shallow? I want it to be deeper. What do I want it to be about? What can I say if I could say anything? Ask all of those questions out loud and answer them out loud. And then write it down. 
um, and you'll find your lyrics and your answers. Um, or you co-write all of, all of the above, actually. Do I have any favorite chords? Yes. <laughs> e minor has been my favorite chord since I learned it because it's so easy uh, on guitar. Um, I like A minor 7, B7, A7. I love anything with a 7. Um, D7, um, C sharp minor. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, I like chords a lot. Um, is it hard to become a songwriter? Yes, because life is hard, but it's a beautiful thing when you fight for it. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. I'm not a songwriter, and this is not a question, but your heart, hair always looks so good. That is really nice of you. Thank you. Just, thank you. Thank, thank you. <laughs> I'm so normal. Do I have a special place where you write music? I write up here a lot. This is the loft. Um, it's a loft studio, studio loft. So I write up here a lot, but I like to write anywhere. I like to write. I love when I get random inspiration to write a song like in a hotel, like after a long day or something, because those songs are usually written really fast and that feels really nice to write really fast, but it doesn't always happen like that. Um, I like to write in the kitchen because I like to eat. I like to write. I like to write everywhere. I just love writing music. Do I ever have songwriter's block? I do. Oh no, I just went away. I lost all the questions. Okay, let's go back. Um... Let's see. Wait. Oh, I, I read it backwards and I was like, what? <laughs> okay, that question didn't make any sense. Uh, when you read it backwards. Okay, how long? Oh, I feel like I already can answer that question. Okay. Do, 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 do. Can you answer my husband singing? I don't know if you could hear that or not. Um, how hard is it to write a first song? It can be hard, but it's worth it. Just do it. Hashtag, this is not a Nike commercial. I just, that's a, such a good line. Um, is songwriting a calling? I don't think so. I mean, I do feel like if it's very apparent that it's what you're not supposed to be doing, then I don't think you should just be like, oh, I'm just going to spend every day doing this. But I think just as a creative exercise and as a way to express gratitude or joy or emotion. I think it's something that everybody should try, to be honest. Um, it doesn't mean that you have to love it, but you know, Aaron and I, we uh, we we kind of like accidentally started this, this game in the car once, um, just like he and I, and then we had um, our niece. I am very blessed to have inherited five nieces when I got married, um, and so, we had Chelsea in the car when she she stayed with us a bit last no, summer before last, and we tried to play the game with her. And she, she's a little shyer, but she went along with it. So you you know you get a word and then you have to freestyle off of the word. And um, you know I don't think that Chelsea has a desire to grow up and become um, a songwriter. I'm pretty sure she wants to be a scientist, and she's going to be an insane scientist because she's so smart, um, or something in the science industry, but. Um, but with that, it was just cool to see this 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 girl that, you know, I, she's a great athlete and great scientist and probably doesn't think, oh, I'm going to be a songwriter. But to hear her like, I'm going to try this out and write a song. I think it's just a cool creative exercise. And we talk about all the time. We can't wait till Isabella and, uh, you know, Lord willing, all of our other children, all 3,000 of them uh, are older. And we're riding down the street and we're like, okay, Bella, your word is speaker. <laughs> okay, um, Billabob, your word is piano. And it's just like, you know, you gotta freestyle, make it up. I just think it's a good creative exercise for everyone, honestly. Um, we are all meant to be creatives. How do you know if a song is actually good? I'm bad at this answer. And this is why I'm gonna try to make it short because we're already at like, oh, 28 minutes. Oh my gosh. Good is subjective. The word good is contingent on what your intention is. If your intention is to go number one at Billboard Pop Radio, then yeah, it has to be a certain kind of good. If your intention is to lead your local church in worship, to connect with your Christian faith, um, then good is lined up with that context. If your goal, if your intention is to write a song that um, tells your family a story of the vacation that you guys just came home from and you just want to let them all know that you're grateful, you see what I mean? Good is subjective. So um, if we're talking in what I believe is just what most people are asking when they ask that question, which is like, can this song help me make an honest living? And can I be a singer songwriter for my full-time job? Um, 
you know, I think that's why it's just good to have producers and community and um, just people in your life that will help you, uh, just help be honest with you and let you know, you know, how it sounds and stuff like that. But if those people say it's not good, my camera stopped. If those people say it's not good, it doesn't mean that it's not good. It could just mean that it's not good for that context. It's not good for that season, but it doesn't mean you should throw it away. I think you should vault it until you need to take pieces from it. Um, wait, what? Oh, <laughs> does your baby bother you when you write songs? I thought they said, does your baby brother bother you when... I was like, I don't have a baby. Do I have a baby brother, mom? No, I don't have a baby brother. Um, no, I wouldn't say bother. I mean, I have a home studio that's a loft, so I definitely hear her when I'm working. Um, you know, uh, obviously Erin's home with her while I'm working. She's not just like down there winging it. These are pretty great. Um, <laughs> And, you know, sometimes it's just more about scheduling my hours. And like I was saying, sometimes you just take like five minutes a day. So sometimes it's literally like, I'll tell Erin, I'm like, ah, I gotta go run upstairs. I gotta work on this. But sometimes I can't do that. Sometimes I'm literally rocking. Last night I was rocking her to sleep and I had a song idea. I couldn't record the melody. It was like, what's more important right here? This melody that could make me millions or my kid getting rest. I chose my kid getting rest. So I pulled out my phone and I typed out the lyrics. And I just got to hope that when I go to work on it, that I remember how it goes. And if I don't, I'll be fine. So, you know, even though songwriting is my full-time job and I love it so much, it's, I think it's just about like, I don't know, not putting my job first and just knowing that my kid comes first. I like, I, I've, I've worked with people like, you know, I've only been married almost two years. And so before I was married, I was not married. <laughs> and I would be in the studio till two, three o'clock in the morning with people who are like married with kids and they're just like, yeah, we're all, hey, I'm gonna miss dinner tonight. And I'm just like, you said that the last three nights we were in the studio, like at some point, at some point, this song does not matter like that. <laughs> like, sorry, it is what it is. Your bills paid, go home and eat dinner. Like, sorry, that took a turn. Um, <laughs> does your husband like your songs? Hey, Aaron. Do you like my songs? Yeah. Okay, thanks. Um, <laughs> it was a question in my Q and A. I'm recording, so oh, okay. <laughs> he's so confused. He's like, "Why would you ask me that?" Um, how tall are you? Five seven. I'm so tall. Um, how do you think of different melodies without thinking that you copied someone else's song? It's just not becoming obsessed with listening to music. I have certain times when I listen to music, certain like if I'm doing a really long drive to Los Angeles, I'm like, I'm gonna listen to music on the way there, not on the way back, you know? Uh, but also like playing it for other people. Like I have written songs sometimes and I'm like, oh, this is good. Oh, this is, oh, 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 this is on the radio, you know? Or like my sister will listen and she's like, low girl, that's, you didn't write that. Um, let's see. That was terrible. I was just being ridiculous. Um, let's see. How do you this is another question? How long does it take to make a new song? Anywhere from 20 minutes to five years, not being sarcastic. I'd say on average, I'd say on average, my process is kind of like I'm recording some like lyric melody stuff ideas. And then two weeks later, I finally get to working on that one on my computer. And I like knock out a demo in a day. And then I fix it so five to maybe like five to six days because i only work in like four to five hour increments and i'm doing other stuff in there but by the time i'm doing all my other stuff and traveling and being a wife and a mom and a sister and a friend which i love obviously it's like a song could take you know five to six weeks because i might only monday then that next wednesday then the next tuesday that kind of stuff um Let's see, let's see. Sometimes I write a poem, but I don't know how to make it into a song. So what's the difference? Oh my gosh, I just, I do that all the time. I'll like grab one of my sister's poems and I'll text her and say, hey, can I, well, actually, I, no, I don't do it with her permission because she says yes every time and we're sisters, it's fine. I'll put music to it and I'll send it to her and I'm like, I'm gonna record this and she'll text me back and she's like, oh my gosh, that's amazing, I love it. Or, oh, that's so cool, can I help you with that because I have another idea for that one line. It's like. I love turning poetry into songs. It's totally possible. Have you and Annalise spoken recently? Yeah, I love that girl. She's so cool. Um, 
Yeah, okay, so literally I would say, and I just got back to where I left off. Okay, all the other questions are just about like where to start and how do you find inspiration and the other one was just like, I like just, we're trying to write a song, we need help with it. So that is like the other, like literally all of the other questions and that's what they are. And we're at about 30 minutes now in this video. And honestly guys, that is what my course is all about. Like I, I, I cause, cause I, could, I say that because I could sit here for six, seven, eight hours and talk about songwriting. Um, but I, I obviously can't actually do that, but it's, it's so, Songwriting can seem so hard and complex and so challenging and overwhelming, but I have some really cool creative tips, more than the ones that I even just share with you guys, some really cool tips and prompts to help get those wheels spinning and to help pull some inspiration from places that you may not have even realized um, were good places and so to pull inf inspiration from, I was gonna say information from, inspiration from. And so I really hope that you guys will check out the description um, to check out that course because I really believe in it and I really think that you guys um, would really enjoy it and benefit from it. I think that'd be super cool. Another question that I got, and it's the last thing that I will leave you guys with is what is my biggest piece of advice for songwriters? Um, and I would say to always finish what you start. Even if you feel like it's a terrible idea, even if you're beating yourself up and you're just like, uh, even if you have to take a break for two to three weeks, go back and finish that song. Don't, don't leave that door open. Just don't do that finish the song, get to the end, and then if you're not in love with it right now, play it for a few other people and then vault it and then move on. Um, it's a hard challenge, but it's a worthy challenge. Trust me, um, it'll be okay. All right, guys, so yeah, thanks so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. I really cannot wait to hear all the songs that you guys create out of this. Make sure you look down in the description to learn more about the course. Um, if you are already ready to record songs or you wanna look, talk, connect with me about possibly co-writing and then um, recording some songs, make sure you look in the bio to connect with my team um, because I am taking a few submissions to uh, work with for later this year and then 2021 as well but click on the screen to subscribe to check out more videos um and then leave a comment below if you found this video helpful at all because that would be really cool and then you know thumbs up make some pizza make a friend dream big all that other stuff that you're supposed to do on a youtube video okay cool talk to you later i love you much i miss you already bye i gotta tell you what i gotta do to make my dreams come true work hard pray more dream big Work hard, pray more, dream big I'm gonna tell you what I gotta do To make my dreams come true Work hard, pray more, dream big Work hard, pray more, dream big